Hey guys, unfortunately it's me again and you're watching this video because you have a perfectly placed scene and you think it's well lit but somehow your renders for your maybe architectural visualization or animation don't look as pristine or high quality as renders of others do. So this video is here to help you in uh, making these creative decisions. However, this video is not going to be a how to render video, right? So I'm not going to go over any render settings, even though that is obviously important as well. But this video is going to be separated in three parts. How to make your footage look more cinematics. First of all, materials. Second of all, lighting. And third of all is the camera component. The cinematic camera component. And the cinematic camera component is a bigger topic and this is going to be a video on its own. So have a look out for that if you are more interested in the details of a Cinecam actor. Okay, so right about now you should see some timestamps on the screen. And with a small plug for my services, business inquiries are in the description below. Here are some links to my websites, patrons and whatnot. To my website as well thank you very much and we start into the video i usually like to get an overview over what is going on in the scene without all of these pop-ups if you press g on your keyboard you have the game mode and you get a much more clearer view of what is going on without all of these indicators and everything so press g on your keyboard and you should be good to go that's just a tip uh, in the beginning but we can start right about now as an example for all of this, I chose this cup to be our hero object, maybe for your animation, for your architectural visualization, but you can apply these principles to all of the other things as well. But I thought if we can make something as small as this cup look cinematic, then we can do it with all the other stuff. We start with number one materials. You can see all of those materials on, oh, they do look fine maybe, right? They are serviceable, but up close, materials have to withstand so much more pressure. And what I mean with that is if you look at this table, for instance, it's a cool texture. It's, it's even a great and a good texture, but it is missing that certain something. And the certain something can most of the time be reflections, normals, roughness, materials, and parameters. They are so-called PBR, physical based rendering materials. They are made out of multiple components, mainly though, and the most important are, well, the color itself, normals, and some specular details. So if we want to make this a little bit more high resolution, we have to make sure that at least those three components, there can be more components to this, but at least those three components, normal texture, color texture, and some roughness materials are taken care of. For the table, this could look something like this, right? It's not a all too complicated material setup, but you have your color over here where you can slightly change what the table is looking like. Then we have our roughness map down here. This is just usually a black and white texture that you can use for multiple purposes. And last but not least, we have our normal map. If we actually just plug that into, there you go, normal. Can we see what's going on? Can't see what's going on as soon as I hit apply. This looks much nicer, all right? I can even make it a little bit more rough if I wanted to not reflect as much. We can even control it further with the specular input in here, but we get to this later. Changing this value makes it makes it more rough or more diffuse. But you you might say this is easy, right? Okay, sure, a desk and a, the, the desk is a desk. What am I supposed to do that has some, some characteristics to it? But for our mug, that's just a mug. Ceramic, it's flush, it's, it's smooth. What else is there going to, to be? Make sure that in your architectural visualizations, everything looks pristine and good, but not perfect. Most of the time as a CG artist, you spend making things look imperfect. A mug is something that is used, has been used and will be used. So there are some imperfections in it and you don't have to model all of those imperfections in it. There are some tips and tricks that you can do to apply a little bit of decal, a little bit of surface imperfections uh, to a lot of objects and it will look smoother, maybe better. You're the better judge of that. There are multiple sources where you can get those imperfections in texture form. So it is lightweight on your computer and you don't have to model everything in there. But if you are already working in Unreal Engine, why don't you jump over to the Quixel bridge 
go to the architectural visualizations and go with imperfections, for instance, pure imperfections, fingerprints, then you can see that there is a lot of smudges, so-called smudges that you can add maybe to your scenes. I go with gr grunge, maybe I like the grunge, download it. I add it to my project. I think it's already added. There you go. I did some testing with fingerprints on my mug. I played around with the parameters a little bit, and then you can change it to whatever you want to whatever you want it to look like. Let's see what grunge does. If I just purely add it to the table, you can see that there is a lot of imperfections going on. This itself is a cool effect. Let's go to the parent of this table material or this grunge material. I already just from our table material copied and pasted these two nodes. I'm going to copy and paste these two as well. And I just paste this one in here, play with the specular, maybe the metallics as well. That's a bit too much. Again, there are multiple ways where you can get these textures, good quality textures. Maybe it is already provided in the materials that you use, but I can highly recommend Bridge alone for textures and materials themselves. Not only Quixel Bridge is more than meta humans. <laughs> Step number two. Now that our materials are on point, we want to actually make sure that we have the right angles and we do the camera setup now. For video games and all of this, you know, use your camera of the of the video game character. But if you want to do a render, maybe again, architectural simulation, visualization, not simulation, there is a cine camera actor that is highly competent. Drag and drop it in there and you see it is a black cam instead of blue cams. And there are significant differences between this one and the one that I am looking through right now. I'm going into perspective cinema cam actor and I can move it around. You can already see that there are some things in focus and some things that are not in focus. However, it already looks pretty cinematic. Let's quickly go over some settings. Film back is what kind of camera you want to use. Again, these settings make much more sense if you have prior exposure to cameras in the real world because the cinema because this cinema cam actor actually functions a lot like cameras in the real world. I have a focal I want to have a focal length of 50 millimeters and our focus distance is going to be this cup. Let's make sure that we have this debug plane going going. There you go. Manually adjust. I want it to be at maybe the center of the cup. And that's basically a lot of the things that you can do. So if you want to have a different look, maybe you want it to be less blurry, you want it to be more blurry. There are a couple of settings that you can do in this camera that make it less blurry, more blurry, give them all, give it a lot more effects. Color grade as well, but maybe we want to do that in a post-processing volume. However, let's focus on the less blurry and more blurry. There's an aperture, which is usually an F 2.8 in a real world, and you can set that number lower, then it's going to be more blurry one more blurry, you can set it to a five, then it is less blurry in the back in the background, maybe to a 22. And there should be next to no blur at all. Or you go further away, increase the focal length. I didn't change, I'm still at 5.0. Go to the mug, get the mug in focus. And even though we are still at 5.0, we have a creamy blurry background. So this is one of the ways you can adjust your cinema cam actor. By the way, if you want to have more control over how this cam how this image looks and the lighting situation in here, if you scroll down a little bit, go to post processing effects and lens, there is a lot of things that you can do with your exposure, for instance, and the bloom. I would actually recommend uh, using a separate post process volume for this, because then the settings are going to be equal across the board. But if you feel them needs to do it manually here, you can always do it this way. I'm gonna switch it back to auto exposure. Now we know that we have high quality materials. We know that we use a cinema camera actor, but the third important role of making a good render or a good Unreal Engine. Cinematic scene is most obviously the lighting situation in here. Same as with the materials that we had on the desk, it looks good overall, but if we want to really have a hero shot, then it needs some more attention as, as well. For instance, 
I thought to give it a moody lighting by having the directional light in the sky that lights this mug up, but you can see that the details are not quite up to snuff and we can change it in rendering and we can change it when we bake lighting. However, usually the directional light and the skylights that we set up uh, above the scene here are not really meant for that. It's, it helps you light up the scene as, as, as you need in the background, but for your hero objects, you might want to have different, different lighting. This is why usually when you download a scene, you see that they have additional lights in those windows in here as well. You would think, you know, why would you need this if you actually have sunlight coming through the windows? But these area lights are much more suited for throwing accurate shadows than the skylight. If I just bring down a light from up here, you can see that the shadows are already way more accurate than the skylight before. So for starters, let's maybe increase the intensity of those lights in the window because I still want to have the details that they provided. Let's say I am somewhat happy how my background, the way my background is looking. Let's bring our hero object actually into the hero focus. For this, we're actually going to use a couple more of these lights, area lights, as you would with any other shoot as well. One over here, I'm gonna make it a little bit, I'm gonna make it smaller and easier to work with. We are going to go with a classic three point setup. And now the beauty is that I can put these lights however I want to, which means I can give this mug also a very narrow backlight if I wanted to, just to separate even the top from the background. By the way, if you turn on exponential high fog, volumetric fog, you can give the scene a little bit of this hazy look. If you turn it up too high, uh, you see that something is wrong. Maybe that's like a morning scene, but it's it defaults at 0.2 and that's usually a good amount. You can change those lights to cast more and less volumetric shadow. Just type in volume and you should be good to go. I think this is I think this is way too much. But highlighting this a little bit with volumes does some wonders in my opinion. I think we are already on a great path. Things that would enhance this scene is obviously like some set dressing that you not only have a cup, but to also have some points of interest before and, and next to it so that we do have our hero object, but it's not the only thing that is going on in, in this scene. Focus should be a little bit off now. Ah, oh, it's good. It's, it's fine. The last thing we are going to do is now add a post-processing volume to it. We just go in here and place actor tab post-processing volume, place it in here. The first thing you want to do is unbound. Unbound, yes. Now it is active everywhere in this scene and not only in this little square that you place. And now we can go for stuff like bloom, for instance. We have bloom intensity threshold. So the threshold, you can, you can see the higher the threshold is, the more light it needs to actually trigger, trigger bloom. The intensity is self-explanatory, but now you also have, you have control over maybe your lens flares that you want to have down, down here and which, which kind of tint they're supposed to have. It's, Maybe if you go with the CDO lens, then it's going to be like a bit more of a blue lens flare, bokeh size. You have a lot of options that you can go into the post-processing shader in here. Color grading, color temperature, there you go, the, the temperature. And now you can already apply some filters if you want to, like I'm, I'm calling it filters, it's not going to be filters, um, in, in here and make your render look the way you want to do. Orange, orange and tealy maybe for you and make it look very, very nice. Okay, so we transformed this inconspicuous mug into something that looks, I think in my opinion, way more interesting than it did before. I hope I have some comparison shots in just a couple of clicks. I hope this was somewhat helpful to you and you actually had some takeaways from this video. There is going to be a more extensive tutorial on how to use the cinema, ca cinema cam actor later on. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you guys. Oh, a plug for my like and subscribe, right? Like and subscribe, support me on my Patreon if you want to. Thank you very much. And uh, here's a plug to all my services and, and websites. 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.